Okay, so at this point, the, uh, the message already, has already been sent to me. I'm going to give the user a little bit of feedback. Um, we uh, create a new little variable that uh, is going to be a string that um, has some data appended to it. We're going to build some HTML here. And for each value in that submitted uh, submitted data, we're gonna we're gonna build a little table here, um, table data and table rows that has for each value. Um, we're gonna put that information together into some into a table, and we're gonna print it out. Um, and it's gonna say to the user, "This is going now. This is being printed back out to the user screen." Um, I'm going to say thank you, the following information has been sent, and then it uh, puts the timestamp, and then it puts the HTML that we've created up here, um, and it closes closes that little bit of HTML, and it closes the, uh, uh, the web page by printing out a footer. So that was a little bit complex. It also, at that point, uh, quits the program. So it does not, if it does all that, it does not print out another form, which just says thank you, your message has been sent and shows the message that they sent, including the email they typed in, the name, and the message, along with the timestamp. So there's a lot that's going on here. Um, to, to review it really quickly, um, we save this as a text file at a certain location. It's just a text file that appears on the website. Whenever that whenever that website is called on, whenever this someone goes to that CGI program on your website, the rebel interpreter is called because it saves the CGI. The web server knows to send this to rebel to be interpreted, to be run. And what rebel does is it prints out some HTML to the to the user's uh, web browser. It prints out that header. It sets some information. Rebel's running and uh, setting some information to be used in this program. It gets any data, decodes any data that's been sent to it, and if this page is empty, it skips all this. If that submitted data is empty, if there's nothing that's been submitted, it skips this whole bit here, and it just goes down and prints a uh, form for the user. That form, again, it's printed to the user's browser. Uh, it's containing a little table here centered on the screen, and that data, or that uh, form, takes some data from the user, name, email, and uh, text message. When the user presses submit, that action goes back to this script, and this time it prints out the header, it runs the program again, and this time uh, some data has been submitted to it. If it's not empty, it runs all this, creates a little message, it sends that to whatever address I want it to send it to, and then it prints out a um, response for the user to say that following information has been sent, prints out a footer, and quits. So it doesn't print out the form again. That's a great little um, default um, uh, form mailer that you can use on your website. And you can adjust it to, to get other information. You could, you could uh, for example, uh, have more uh, form entries down here. You could get uh, adjust this to get more than just the email. If you want to ask some questions from the user, you could have drop-down boxes, for example, and you could get that information sent to you and uh, process that data, for example. If you'd like you'd ever do something other than mail, you could um, you know, do calculations and, and uh, other processing on information that's been sent. You could add to a database. Uh, anything that, you, that you'd like to do with it, you, you can uh, use the full power of Rebels programming uh, abilities, you can manipulate images, you could upload files, you can just about anything you want um, with uh, with that Rebel code. And here's just a little uh, example of the uh, header that was used. There's, you can see there's a header, it has a uh, page title, uh, there's a background color, some tables, and you know, that table is going to be 95% of the web page. Um, and then here's the footer. It basically closes all of those tables that were open um, and closes the body and the HTML. It has a little copyright notice down on the bottom. Uh, it's a nice little, uh, nice little um, format for a web page. You can use that. That's released open source. And it looks like this. It's got just a little more formatting than before. Uh, 
a little black header. You could, for example, if you wanted to put a picture on top, you could put a picture on top, make it look like the rest of your website. Type in here, uh, name, type in our email. click submit and we get our now that email has actually been sent to me and um, get our little uh, response turn it out to show us that we're actually uh, it's actually been done and the next example demonstrates how to work with dynamic drop down lists very often you want to have the user be able to uh, Instead of typing in in a form, I'm be able to select from a uh, drop down list. For example, here I'm going to have the information in the uh, um, users.txt file entered, and we have the option to choose some months and, and uh, dates and times. And uh, hard coding those into a, a web page. Uh, can be an impo impossible in the case of uh, working with dynamically changing data and uh, in case of dealing with large lists of numbers and uh, and dates and so forth times uh, it can be very time consuming to put and space consuming to put all of that on a page this is the code that was actually used to create that page that you were just looking at and um, again it starts with this is a program so we're going to save it as something.cgi, upload it to the web server, and the web server knows to run this program to interpret it. And so we've got a rebel header. We're going to print the HTML out and uh, print HTML title, the little header, and we're going to start the body. And again, we decode any info that's come to this page and uh, save that and submit it. If something has been submitted, if that's not empty, we're going to do something with it. If it uh, is empty, it's not empty, we do this. If it is empty, that doesn't get run, and we print a form out. So what we are going to do, we're going to have a little form here, like you saw, that um, has some drop-down lists. We're going to submit that, and that's going to go to a page that tells us the name that's been selected and prints the date that was selected. Uh, so if something has been submitted from the form, we print the Lord's name selected, and we get the first item that was that was input, and then we rejoin this text. The second, third, and fourth items that were submitted; those were those drop-down lists. We have four items here: one, two, three, four, and then submit button is the fifth. Um, so the first item submitted forward slash two, submitted forward slash four, submitted forward slash six, and submitted forward slash eight how we refer to those those items on the page. Uh, what we're going to do is rejoin all this text, time and date selected, and then those items that were submitted, and then we're going to print that whole thing selected, and we're going to quit the program, so it's not going to do anything else. So when you do submit, when you go to that page, uh, it prints out all that stuff that we uh, selected, and it just ends there. It doesn't do anything else. Uh, so this gets run if something's been submitted, and it quits. If something hasn't been submitted, the program continues on, and we print a form. So the first time we go to this page, if we just go there without actually submitting something to it, we just go there from our favorites, or we type in the uh, type in the address, or we you know, get a link from another page, then this gets done. We print out a form. And the action of that form is going to point right back to itself. So when we click on the submit button, it's still staying at CGI. It just has some data submitted afterwards. Um, it's going to point right back to itself. 